Early only, Mark. Fancy. So this time last year, I think it was a few months earlier, I saw you. The show was just starting. Yeah. And you guys were, it was just so new. So ha a year later, I think you guys won Teen Choice Awards. And I mean, you have so many fans. It's unbelievable. How's it, how's it feel? It's, it's crazy. I can't believe it's been, what, a year and a half, almost two years since we started the show and since I read the script for the first time. And, and now it has a huge following. And yeah, we, we won a People's Choice Award last year and a, a bunch of Teen Choice Awards. And it's just, it's very surreal, but really awesome. But definitely surreal because we're, we're shooting in Georgia and we don't, we don't, we feel like we're in this bubble. I've, I always say this, we're in a bubble and we live in a bubble. And so it's kind of, it's kind of interesting and, and cool to see what's going on outside of the bubble. Well, when you get, I say, when you get teens and tweens on board, that is where the markets are at right now. I mean, that's it. It's you know, true. you get those those that demo wrapped in, you got it. Yeah, exactly. So you're a huge Twitter, Twitter, or tweeter, tweeter, Twitter. Twitter. Uh, yeah, I'm a tweeter, I guess. We so. were just talking about just the social network aspect of everything, and when you do get a show, a hit show, is that nice for you, or do you connect with the fans a lot? The Social Network. It was a great movie. They won the Golden Globe. Um, uh, yeah, no, Twitter, yeah, it's very important. I, I think it's very important to be connected with the viewers and with your fans. And, um, I mean, it, you wouldn't, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. They're the ones who support us. And to, to hear their voices and be in touch with them really helps out a lot because you get to know what they like, what they don't like, what bothers them, what impresses them, and it's almost like, like getting constructive criticism or, or getting positive feedback every now and then when you need it, and then choosing to ignore the things that you don't want to hear when they say that. I don't know. It's, but Twitter's a really cool medium, and it really gives the fans a, a, a chance to get closer to the people that they admire and that they like their work, and so it's, there's a lot of pluses for Twitter and for Facebook and for other things. I don't have Facebook, just setting the record straight, but I have Twitter, so. Let's talk about playing the two characters and how, how has that been for you? Because they're, they're very different and you're very different when you play Catherine versus Lena. And talk to me about that and what you do to make it that just cool and different. Well, can you guess which one I'm playing right now? Who I am? Oh, I hope not, Catherine. Because <laughs> I'm interviewing you. <laughs> Where's Elena? <laughs> um, well, it's it's um, usually the the superficial distinction is the curly hair and the tight clothes and the heels for Catherine versus like the Converse and the t-shirt and jeans and the straight hair kind of the back feel for Elena physically, um, and a lot of the time. Believe it or not, the hair and makeup and the the physical kind of the the clothing, all that helps a lot for creating a character and feeling like a different person. And I learned that um, when I was doing theater and when I was doing scene study years ago when I was training. Every aspect really, really changes the way you walk, the way you talk. And as soon as I put those heels on, as soon as I look like this other person, I feel like another person. And. Um, and Catherine, I mean, there's a lot of, they have a lot of differences. One is crazy and she's maniacal and vindictive, but really snarky and fun and flirty. And she just, she's a confident 21st century woman. But to get to the 21st century, she's lived through many centuries. So she's um, lived a long time and learned a lot. And she's a, She's a she's a strong woman and she's a force to be reckoned with. So I don't envy anyone who has to be in Catherine's path and and fight her, I suppose. But it, it, I, with that said, I play Elena, who is directly in her path and has to fight her all the time. So um, I also think that Elena is a really strong kind of woman, and and she is she's a lot closer to who I am in many ways because she's just. A regular girl, and um, and she's. I mean, I think I might try to be sweet whenever I can. <laughs> but um, but she's a fighter, and she's a trooper, and she's courageous, and she's just like. She's she's also another another version of the 21st century strong woman.
uh, internationally, it's it's huge. It's big. It's I mean, this isn't just you know a lot of shows do really well here. They no, don't necessarily translate well internationally. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those shows that you have fans all over the world. Have you noticed that? I know you say you live in a bubble, but do, are you aware of the fact that it's that big? I think that um, what gives us that awareness is also Twitter. The people from Argentina or from Russia or from Japan, people send us tweets from all over the world saying that the show is huge there and that it's doing really well. And um, I mean, I'm from Bulgaria, so I'll hear from a lot of Bulgarians that'll be there. And unfortunately, this show hasn't started airing yet. Hopefully, they're all kind of asking me, when is it going to be on TV here in Bulgaria or in or in Tokyo or you know it's there's a lot of places that it still hasn't reached but I think that judging um, judging based on the the success that it has in the countries that it has been in it's gonna do well everywhere and it's I mean it's got the common the same thing that everyone loves it's got the vampires it's got the teens it's got the angst it's got the 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 cute boys and the vampires and the werewolves and there's, it just has all these different elements that a lot of people love and want right now so it's it's been doing well across the board which is really cool it's it's rare and really cool but we're still in that bubble <laughs> you know it's definitely something to hear about but we don't get to like when we go to London for example we went to London and Monte Carlo last year and it was just insane it's just not something that we're used to it's a good thing <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing, I think. Um, let's talk about, didn't you, in, uh, just in Bulgaria, uh, quickly just touch on the fact, didn't you shoot in Bulgaria and were able to speak? Isn't that your language? Uh, we didn't shoot in Bulgaria, no. We, um, we, it was shot, the story was in Bulgaria, but we shot it in Georgia. So it was, the, we went back into the 1400s and the beginning of Catherine and the way she became a vampire. And, um, because I'm Bulgarian, the, the writers wrote in the whole teaser in Bulgarian and in Bulgaria, but we didn't actually shoot it there, unfortunately. That would have been cool because I would have been able to hang out with my family. I got a couple little, got a couple little facts, and I thought it was there, but it's still cool. Yeah. You got to, to, got to use your language. So yeah, yeah, awesome. I got to speak Bulgarian. I spoke in Bulgarian, English. I've done a British accent, and I've done the two characters, and it's been... Um, for some reason, we didn't do accents when we were in the 1800s, which would have been really fun. But, but you're doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to see you again. Thank you. Take care. Good to see you. So last year when I.